pain so great You don't know how you make it So many nights You've asked the question why But the Father says There's purpose in your suffering To see His glory You cannot deny There's a healing taking place In you today Jesus Christ the healer Is passing by your way Let your faith arise within you And believe it when you say I am healed in Jesus' name. You may be sitting there today Feeling hopeless Overwhelmed By the hurt that's deep inside But the healing balm of Gilead is flowing It's the power of the blood of Jesus Christ There's a healing taking place in you today Jesus Christ the healer is passing by your way Let your faith arise within you And believe it when you say I am here in Jesus' of Jesus I am healed I am healed I am healed I have felt the touch of Jesus I am healed I am healed There's a healing taking place in you Jesus Christ the healer is passing by your way Let your faith arise within you and believe it when you say morning. The title will be Partaker of His Inheritance. Partaker of His Inheritance. As an introduction, you know, I would like to share with you, you know, about the British royal family, the worth, you know, uh, you know, being a part of the British royal family, there are benefits, especially if you uh, are succeeding uh, to the throne uh, of the Queen or of the Prince. Robert Mendick, reporter from British newspaper The Telegraph, said on May 2012, you see, he said the worth of the royal family is 
44.5 billion pounds. Wow! That's a, a worth of the royal family in dollars. That would be about 69 billion US dollars. That's the worth of the crown and the uh, and, uh, royal um, you know, heritage that they have. On top of that, the monarchy is reckoned to be worth an additional 26.4 because of the economic benefits it brings to the UK through the boost to tourism and other industries, an additional $26.4 billion. But let me encourage you today, if you have this colossal calling and you receive it in your life as a believer, you are worth more than that. I was thinking of that, you know, sometimes we look at this royalty and we uh, kind of think, you know, in our lives and we are imagining what if we were those people. But you see, in Christ, you can be a true royalty. And because of this colossal calling, you are worth more and more and more than what I have shared with you, their wealth. Our text for this morning is... Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 to 14. Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 to 14. And this is what the Bible says. And giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritances of His holy people in the kingdom of light. For He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of His Son, whom He loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Yes, I have here three principles that would describe how we became partakers of his inheritance, of this wealth that cannot be measured by human thinking. Number one, the first principle is this. He was the one who qualified us in his inheritance. You know, we were not qualified by our own doing, by our own merit, you know, by our, our own lineage, you know, like I'm uh, uh, from the family of Manuel and my father is a royal, you know, person. That does not qualify me to be in this kind of inheritance, but it is God who qualifies us. In fact, in verse 12, it says, giving joyful thanks to the Father. We're so thankful as Christians because He was the one who qualified you to share in this inheritance of His holy people. Since you are part of His holy people, since you are part of His race, then you have this inheritance. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29 says, If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Abraham and his seed was promised this inheritance. And, uh, you know, being a believer in Christ, we became Abraham's offspring. We became part of Abraham's race, and we too are receiving this kind of promise. And we know that our faith, our destiny is so bright because God will fulfill His promise according to His time. He is already fulfilling the promises to us being part of His royal family and then later on when He comes back again, Jesus Christ will reveal to all people, to all nations that we are royalty. We are part of His holy people and therefore we must rejoice that now even as we, you know, experience trials and as we don't see yet those promises fulfilled, we can be encouraged that God will give us those promises according to His time and according to His perfect will. Thank you so much, Lord. That's why Paul is saying here and giving joyful thanks to the Father. We ought to have that kind of joy because we are heirs. We have inheritance. Though you don't have inheritance here on earth, 
you can be rest assured in God if you are called because of this huge, extreme, colossal calling, you are an heir of Jesus Christ and you have an inheritance that cannot be taken away from you, does not, uh, is not affected by rust nor moth and it cannot be destroyed. Praise God. Number two is this about being partaker or sharer of this inheritance. He rescued us so we, we may be partakers of the, this inheritance. Verse 13, it says, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son whom he loves. Well, before we were in darkness, before we are out of this royalty, before we are actually enemies, we are those who are bound to destruction. But because of Jesus Christ, His Son, His death at Calvary, He gave us this opportunity to receive Him as our personal Lord and Savior. And when He, you know, came into our lives, He rescued us, He brought us from this dominion of darkness into this kingdom of his son which is the royal people the people whom he loves and the people where the promises of inheritance are you know given so this is the verse that i would like to share with you in second peter chapter 1 verse 4 through this he has given us his very great and precious promises amen so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. You see, we, because of our sinful nature, you know, we experience corruption in this world. And it says here, we, we have escaped this because he has delivered us. And not only that, we have been given the right and the power to participate in the divine nature. See, the only, you know, nature that cannot be destroyed by the devil, nor this world, is the divine nature. God, because he has a divine nature, cannot be defeated by the enemy. And because you have that kind of nature in you, the divine nature, the enemy cannot destroy you anymore, cannot corrupt you anymore, and this world cannot affect you anymore in terms of giving you decay or making you uh, uh, somebody that will experience death. No, not anymore, because he has rescued us, and now we are partakers of this inheritance. His divine nature afforded us this inheritance. I'm so glad as a believer, you and I have been given this divine nature. This is the nature of God and this is the best nature that a man can have. And so I pray today that you will receive that kind of nature so that you will also be a partaker of this inheritance. Number three, my third point is this. He brought us back so he may bring back what was lost from us. He brought us back so that he may bring back what was lost from us. Verse 14, it says, In whom, in Christ, we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. You see, the word redemption means to buy back, you know, to redeem, to take back. But this you know, nature, this privilege was taken back, you know, or we were taken back from the enemy by the blood of Jesus Christ. We were, we were bought with a price. You see these ransom stories, these crime stories, you know, they take a child, uh, a family, and they ask for ransom, like three million US dollars, and there will be negotiation, of course, you see, in Christ Jesus, we were bought, uh, bought back by a ransom, you know, commodity called the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He died at Calvary, and because of that, His blood shed, 
and that blood was used to pay for our sins and to redeem us back, to buy us back from the enemy. Verse 3 of Ephesians chapter 1 and also verse 7, it goes like this. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessings in Christ. How did that happen? Because in verse 7, it says, In Him we have redemption. See? That word again. In Him we have redemption through the blood, through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of His grace. You see, how can we experience or how can we receive all those promises? Because here Paul said that we have been blessed with every, say every, every spiritual blessing in Christ. We have been blessed with that. That's our inheritance. There's no need, you know, uh, in our lives anymore because every need has been provided for in Christ. How? Because we have been bought back from the enemy because in Him we have redemption through His blood. I love that. You know, somebody has to sacrifice for me and He sacrificed His life in order to buy me back, to redeem me, to rescue me. Well, Today, I would conclude with this verse in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. And I would like you to remember this, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, if you can remember these verses that I have just shared. This is a, a verse that you can claim. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Claim that now in your life, that you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. And today, those of you who do not have that assurance, you can pray a prayer like this and open your heart to Jesus Christ. Say, Jesus Christ, I need you. I want that privilege to be a, a partaker of your inheritance. Come into my life and you know, I'll make you my personal Lord and Savior. Would you like to bow down right now and pray with me? Amen? Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open now my heart to you and receive you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive my sins. I receive the free gift of eternal life. life and that privilege to be a partaker of your inheritance. In you, I am an heir. In you, I am a royal Christian. I am a chosen generation. Thank you so much. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you are not part of those who are so blessed because you are a partaker of his inheritance. God bless you today. Church is a very important organization or group or assembly on earth. In fact, the Bible says it's the most powerful assembly on earth. For the church is not like that only. A church receives a lot of attacks. It's like forces in the midst of battle that we need to really pray. And we are fighting against those who disrupt peace on earth. We have a different purpose for our lives. God gave us the Holy Spirit after we received our Lord Jesus Christ in the moment that we ask for forgiveness of our sins through his sacrifice on the cross. And he gave us the Holy Spirit to guide us to all knowledge and to all truth. That is the key of Christianity. The purpose of coming not only to be saved, but to learn how to please God and to learn how we conduct our lives in this world, we are in this world. But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is. It takes faith. You cannot come to God 
and be a faithless person. Let me use this illustration. There was a little boy who was told by an atheist teacher, take your fist, clench it, and shake it at the heavens. Because there is no God. And the boy said, no. And the teacher said, why? Don't your parents teach you how to follow authority? I gave you instruction. You should follow my order. And the boy said, well, sir, if I clench my fist and shake it at God, if he is there, he will be mad. But if he is not there, why, I would look silly. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Yes, with singing. Know that the Lord, he is good and he is God. Jesus Christ was sacrificed as a lamb. Why he and why he alone? Because he is the only one worthy to be sacrificed. He is the only one that is holy and acceptable before God. It is the privilege of the Christian person to know and understand these things. In other words, the Lord doesn't want that you continue being a baby in Him. You have to have a process where you're going to become mature. Mature means that you have come to the state of producing something. Mature means that you are going to begin to take the right decisions in spite of the circumstances that surround you. We are limited and we don't see things ahead. You see, sometimes you are delayed because there must be something that God is protecting you in an event that would happen that might hurt you. And if it is not God's will for you to be hurt yet, you know, or to be with Him yet, so to speak, it will not happen. It is always according to His will. So it's very important that you submit to that rule that God wants to implement in your life and in the lives of other people. Tell you how. If you want to be with Jesus, if you want to have a relationship with Jesus, you can do it by prayer, by asking from your own self-will. And that prayer goes like this, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior and my Lord. Take control of the throne of my life. Give me eternal life, give me forgiveness of sin, and make me the kind of person you want me to be. If you hear that small, sweet voice, because God is never going to yell at you. It's not going to be in this loud, threatening voice, you know, that loud, booming, whoa, no. If you feel that, that gentle calling, that small, sweet voice, talking to you, saying, today is the time to be saved, can I ask you to pray that prayer with me, those of you that are watching us? Those of you that have heard this lesson and have changed over the ministry of this church as we have gone and delivered the message to you, as you are maturing every day, and I know you are, as you, if you are looking at our word, if you are looking at our ministry, you are maturing every day. Can you pray also for these other people that do not know Jesus? Can you be part of that? Can our, that be our partnership in this ministry? And so those of you that don't know Jesus, the first time you're asking Jesus to come, can I ask you to pray today because the day and time to be saved is now. Can we pray together? Can we pray together now? Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior and my Lord. Take control of the throne of my life. Give me eternal life. Give me the forgiveness of sin. And make me the kind of person you want me to be. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, angels in heaven are jumping up and down. Enjoy. Because of the fact that you are now part of the kingdom of God. And so I say to you, as you follow us on this website, and all the other websites that we have, as you listen to our sermons, may God bless you. May you have a blessed day. May you have a blessed life.